Good morning, everybody. Hi, guys. Um, Hi. We are here recording for our second day for Demo December, and I understand that the first day didn't get posted yesterday. So um, please bear with it. It is going to get posted. Don't worry if you don't sign up till tomorrow. It doesn't matter. You just have to watch videos at some point in time or be here. Um, I'm going to start with actually showing what I embroidered last night, okay? Um, what I've got here is actually the Demo December flower because it's really cool and she's done something really neat with the instructions. And if you take the instructions home with you, it does make it easier to do. But I've already done two, so by the third one, I kind of remembered what I was doing. So, um, I love it. in the first hooping, you actually create all of these designs. So in the very, uh, stay right there. Maybe it won't let me tilt it. Okay. So in the very first hooping, all four of these pieces get done. Okay. So it's the whole point set of topper portion that get done in one hooping. Um, I chose to um, put a piece of the uh, mylar on top of the one piece. And I really like how it looks. Okay. Yeah. Um, it is a little bit tricky. This is done on wash away. And typically when mylar is put down, more stitches are put on top of it. So tearing it away, I was very careful because I didn't want to tear into this, okay? So this is not the product project that is like to be given to a four-year-old. You know, this is for another adult that's going to respect that you made a topper for them because it's really pretty. But you then do a second hooping, and in the second hooping, you actually do an outline set of stitches, and then you use a piece of felt to give a base. And I'm gonna pass this around so you can see it closer. And you can see it on camera actually pretty well. See that center circle that's on here, right here? And I'll pass this around so you can see it. It's used kind of like a clock. So once you do this, it's going to then put down the leaf goes in next, and it sets the leaf off on an angle here, and it shows you exactly where to put it. Then after it does that, it actually does a nine o'clock on a clock, okay? So it has a straight hand and a second hand. All the other pieces have that same stitch out on it of a nine o'clock. So right there in the center, you can see the nine o'clock. That's how you get everything lined up. So as soon as this is done, it's going to tell me to put this piece on. It says to put your felt piece on. So you put it on and you line up the nine with the nine. Up oh, here they come in. Hopefully I left it open. Did I leave it open? I must not have. I can get it. Okay, so you wanna line up the nine o'clock with the nine o'clock. And you're gonna do that all three times that you put your pieces on. It actually stitches on, so it's gonna stitch on the leaf first and it puts a little line for where the leaf goes, then this one's gonna go on, then this one goes on, and then we actually glue the last one on because it covers up all those other stitches. So it really is straightforward, simple. I'll pass this around. I'm not gonna pass this one around because I want it to come back looking like this, <laughs> but you can see right in this that at that little center clock there that it actually has like time on it and you're just gonna line that up and it works great. Chris, do you wanna grab that? That way you guys can all take a peek at that. Um, so I, that was to me like the first time, it's like this is a new technique, a new thing, and she doesn't really explain it, but once you see it, that it's, okay, it's a clock. Okay, I can line that up with that up. And it just makes sense. It goes forward, straight forward. Do you see the center of the circle on there? Mm -hmm. Yep. And once it stitches the leaf on, it'll stitch on the next part. So this has wash away um, solvent in it. So we stitch it onto that. And you can see that I've kind of shaped mine. Um, it's just, um, you're, you don't wanna rinse these. You wanna use the water kind of as a knife to cut off the outside edges of it. It will get wet, but I don't wanna sit there and scrunch it out. I want the stiffness of this. I want it to have some texture to it. Otherwise it's just gonna be floppy. So I wouldn't put it in a bucket and let it sit there for five minutes. I take it to the sink and I just carefully rinse it. Um, that way I leave the structure. On this very center piece, I really made sure that I divoted it in because otherwise when it goes into the other pieces, it doesn't want to hit into there far enough. So I want to make sure that it's got enough so that it's pushed into that center. So that's why this one's kind of squished. 
And I just did this right on my kitchen counter. It's basically like a potato starch that's in there. So it rinses away really nicely. It won't clog your drain, thank you. It won't clog your drain or anything like that. I've heard people say that they've had issues with that. You'd have to have a ton of it, okay? We're talking, and then you didn't do any dishes for the week, okay? I mean, it, it, it takes a lot, okay? This does nothing. You feel it on your fingers a little bit. It's a little bit sticky, but nothing, nothing horrible. So I just wanted to give you a quick overview of that because I want to go home and finish stitching this tonight um, and put it together so that way tomorrow when you come in, you'll be able to see it totally done. Okay, so the other thing that I told you I was going to talk about for a minute today is this product. This is not something we carry in the store. We can't. They, um, it's just a mass marketed product. Um, it, is, um, it used to be available at Hobby Lobby. Yeah, right exactly so now we get it on amazon you know it comes in but it is really wonderful glue because it's permanent glue but it's still soft and flexible so that's what i used to close that opening on the basket yesterday it still gives it mobility but it is permanent glue okay yeah i just bought some okay <laughs> onward um, so the Mylar that I used was actually not the Kimberbell Mylar. We like um, the Mylar from um, Pearly Gates. It has more color to it. Um, it's just really pretty. And I, I think this is going to be stunning when it's put together. Um, so that is the Kimberbell felt and it's um, just the plain white. I added the pink into it because I just wanted to add a little texture to it. So, okay. So today's project is um, this fun little um, trivet, placemat, potholder, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Um, just a fast, mug easy rug. project, mug rug, large size mug rug, a um, mug and cookies rug. Um, but they're fun to make because you look like you're impressive and you don't have to work too hard. So um, we do have kits available back there. In the kit, you are going to get six, seven fabrics. So you get, uh, not gonna even open that. Seven fabrics, seven pieces of fabrics and a piece of batting, okay? So we're going to use the hexagon trim tool, which is this ruler here, and we're using the largest size. If I use the one that's called the round three, um, it makes great little wine glass um, holders, okay? You can just turn the wine glass right into that, and then they sit right on the base of it, and it just sits really nicely. And it just slides right in, and you look very impressive if you, well, especially if you make six different ones, and you have yeah. a party, and that, I mean, and what a great way to use up scraps, okay? So, well, and then everybody can keep their wine glass Right, separate. exactly, exactly. Okay, so. It's called a hexagon what? It's a, called a hexagon trim tool. We yeah. use this for lots of things. There's um, Karen, um, Mo Krista Mosier uses this. Um, I've used it to do, um, uh, blah, 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 what's the name of that? Sure, okay. <laughs> we just need to cut a bunch of these then, okay? And then um, yesterday I had a group walk in and they're like, could you do a demo for us? <laughs> Shazam, look what I came up with. I showed how to do it yesterday in grays, okay? <laughs> Exactly. Okay. It's amazing when you, you already set up and you don't even have to think about it. So this is a great way to use up Christmas. Tree. Oh my God. It's a great way. So it doesn't matter, um, which way you turn this because it's going to turn all different directions. I'm just going to set it on top. My cutting mat is just shy of being big enough to do <laughs> all the way around. Um, but this is when I impress everybody because I am fortunate enough to cut left and right handed. So um, I don't have to move as much as everybody else does. Careful with your yes. foot on the floor. There's something under there. Oh, my Diet Coke. <clears throat> <laughs> and your toes are about three inches from it. <laughs> I have a friend in the front row, though, that's really good at cleaning up. So, you know. <laughs> Did I say that out loud? Is, yeah. is, is that why she was the first one uh -huh. to and notice her it? Initials D D. Uh -huh. <laughs> my initials are D D. <laughs> oh, four D's in my whole. There you go. Okay, so I have cut my first set. I'm going to set that aside. So that is my batting and my backing fabric. From each of these sets, I'm going to cut exactly the same shape, and I'm actually going to cheat and I'm going to put three and three. 
save one set of cutting. Oops. So if you wanted to make a pot holder, would you put more batting, batting? in there? No, because you're actually have got right here. You've got two, four, six layers of fabric plus a piece of adding plus the backing. So, I mean, you've got a lot there. You got a lot going on there. That looks like it's a good time to use the rotary cutter. This is a perfect mat. time yeah. Yeah. for this mat. And it's also, I truly love when I have to cut around templates to use the small cutter. Oh. I don't overcut as much. You know, with a larger size cutter, it's so easy to get too far and then you have a problem. And actually, if I go this way, I can fit the whole thing on here in one time. You're off on that one side a little bit. Oh, I'm not gonna worry about it. There you go. Yep. I remember I someone do, telling me the ones that, I that have you move out of where I you, stuck not them. the material. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Move it or lose it. Those are. And she has lots of help. Ten inch squares. These are ten inch squares. Okay, so that's yeah, what you I get in your. Something out of the ten inch squares that I still have. Exactly. This is a great way to use up things. So and it's a fast house party gift. I mean, you show up with these and you look like you've done a ton of work and you really haven't. <laughs> okay. So after I cut all of these. I'm then going to um, press them. And that is probably where people make the most mistakes on making these. And I almost did it yesterday when I was doing it. Well, I did do it, but I didn't admit to it. I just kept going, okay? So it gets folded like this, not like this. So we don't want handkerchiefs. We want half hexes, okay? If you wind up with a handkerchief, you went into a side instead of going from a point to a point. So we want a point to a point, not in the middle of the sides. So no hankies, no hankies, no pankies. Okay, <laughs> so six pieces are going to get pressed. So we're gonna move over there. We're gonna move and we're gonna press. I don't know if they're gonna see it. Oh, they actually see a lot right there. Okay, so we're gonna press all of these. So one of the things to think about is after you press these, these are really pretty if you did decorative stitches along that folded seam, okay? So even if you wanted to do all of it in white, a whole white thing, and you did black little um, stitching on it, or you did all white and you did blue little snowflakes on it, you wanted to add rickrack, you would just do it right along that folded edge and add some really pretty um, decoration to it. Lots of people ask me about Inselbright. I um, am not a huge fan of Inselbright. I think it's misused. Um, Inselbright is designed to keep things hot or to keep things cold. So I believe that it should be used in like lunch bags and things like that. Um, not in pot holders, not in oven mitts because I don't wanna keep that heat in that oven mitt. I want to let it go away. Um, and I also believe like when you go to the store and you buy um, an oven mitt, they don't have it in it. Why are we doing that, okay? Um, it just doesn't seem like the place or the time. But in a lunch bag, absolutely go for it. A table runner, not so much. Okay, so I'm back. I have got my fabric and I have got my six pieces. The first thing I'm going to do is take a clippy 
and put it on one of my short ends. This is the game changer. I'm going to then line it up. There we go. Line it up so that I've got it matching up so my folded edge is in the center there. My folded edge is in the center and my clippies on the side here. Okay? I'm going to then create triangles going around in a circle. So the next piece is going to go down right next to it and I've created a triangle with the first piece. I'm going to take the next piece, move over one section, and create my next triangle. It's all like cutting a pie. Yes, like cutting a pie, okay? So now I have two triangles and then I've got my third piece. I'm gonna repeat my white again. My raw edges are all with the rest of the raw edges. I've got another triangle. Now I'm going to take my next piece and when I go to set it down and I move it over, I covered up my first piece. I don't want to do that. I want to pick up the piece that has the clip on it and set it underneath. This is the game changer. If you don't have that on there, it gets so confusing, okay? Now I'm going to create another triangle. My raw edges are on the outside. I'm going to go right here. Guess what? I covered up that first piece again. I'm going to pick it up and now I'm gonna go underneath it. And now I've made a perfect pinwheel. But if you don't have that clippy in place, it makes it really hard and very confusing. So if it goes over the top of your clipped piece, you need to lift it up. Okay, I'm gonna do it all over again. Okay, here's my beginning piece. I'm going to grab a triangle, or a heck, uh, Half parallelogram, hexi. half hexi parallelogram. Um, and I'm just gonna put a clippy on my short side. I'm going to lay it down directly on top of my hexagon and I've got it marked right there. Actually, for camera, we'll probably put a pink one. They can't really see it on there. There's a yellow one. Okay, can we see that better? Maybe, maybe not, uh, hard to say, okay. So then we're gonna to start to build. We're gonna put the next one right next to it. And we're gonna make ourselves a nice little triangle right there. <coughs> the next one's gonna go on and we're gonna get another triangle. Too far. <laughs> Too far. Right there. And a big piece of pie. A big piece of pie. <laughs> okay. Exactly, how to do it wrong. A triangle. If it looks like that, it's wrong. Exactly. Okay. Then we're going to put our next piece. And guess what? As soon as I go on top of that piece with the clippy, I want to pick that piece up. Sorry, guys. I can't do it in midair. Pick that piece up and set it right back on top. Do it right away because otherwise you confuse yourself. Then you're going to put your next piece on. It's going to go right there. We're going to repeat again and pick that whole piece up and put it underneath. It's as easy as pie. <laughs> but um boom. And you can see it's all nested super tight in the center there, which is exactly what you want. Okay, now this is the time that I'm going to clip all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to use my clippies and I'm going to clip the whole thing in place. But I'm going to check mine because doing it in mid flight is not always the best idea. Actually, it's not too bad. Ooh, I just had one of those deja vu moments, like I've done this before. <laughs> so um, these can also be done, I mean, any piecing. You could do stripes going this way. I said to do, okay, so you could do stripes coming around here and make it look like candy, you know, and then just put a, um, um, a loop on it so that it could hang and it could be a really cute candy. Um, so there's lots of things that you can do with this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip this all the way around. Once I've got it clipped in place, I'm going to stitch around. But we have great things on here to be able to look at when we're doing this. And they are, we have an intersection where one piece intersects the next piece. So, 
we are gonna stitch basically around in a hexagon, but you wanna hit your needle right at an intersection point right here, and that's where you're gonna to pivot to turn to go to the next straight line. Hit there, pivot, and turn to go to the next straight line. Normally we sew as quilters at a quarter of an inch. I don't want you to go to a half of an inch, but I want you to be more than a quarter of an inch because we've got batting underneath there, we've got all this stuff, and if you miss it and you've turned the whole thing, you're mad at yourself, okay? So go a heavy quarter of an inch, okay? Three eighths, whatever you wanna call it, but don't just do a scant quarter of an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna set it under my machine. If your machine needs a walking foot, put one on. Use a walking foot if that is something you need. This machine works really well without having one, so we're okay. You might wanna move your camera. Maybe, no, I'm actually pretty good, I can see me. Oh, okay. They're never gonna be able to see totally anyway. So as soon as I get up to that um, seam where it hits, where the two pieces are connected, and I'm gonna put my machine on needle down. Perfect. Turn and go straight again. This is a time where I don't want to use the cheapest batting I have. Um, Batalizer, um, 80-20, um, something that has a little bit more texture to it. If it's really um, soft, fluffy batting, the feed dogs won't pull it through really nicely and you'll get um, scrunching underneath. Um, can you sew it with the batting on the top? Absolutely, but then you're not gonna have as pretty of points when you um, turn it to the other side. So I have an option right now. My option is to turn this right away to see if I have any problems, then go in and trim it. Because there's nothing worse than getting all done and finding out that you missed something, okay? Um, so I would rather turn it right now and just look at my edges, then turn it back and trim up. So I'm gonna peek at the other side to make sure I got all of the pieces in here. So I'm just rough turning it just to see that everything is put in place. And because of the way this is put together, it, it turns super easy. You just keep turning and turning and turning. And then all of a sudden it, it's magic, it just happens. Okay, so I'm just going around these outside edges to make sure I caught everything. Because I think that this is really important to just make sure. Because once it's done, uh, then you're mad. Nope, it looks great, okay? So I'm just checking. I don't see any raw edges sticking out. So I'm gonna go back to the other side because I do wanna trim my batting in that outside edge there. If I leave that batting in, you're gonna wind up with a really heavy outside edge to it. Um, it's still thicker there because you've got layers of fabric, but it's not as thick as two layers of batting in that outside edge. Okay, so I'm back to the original side. I can also see in my batting that I've got it all the way around, but I'm not seeing all my layers. That's why it's easier to just turn it to make sure everything's caught. So now I'm going to use my scissors and I'm just gonna go along and I'm gonna trim out that extra batting right there. And I'm just laying it right next to it and getting rid of that. And I'm trying to do it as easy as I can. 
If you have a pair of the duckbill scissors, this is absolutely the perfect time to use those because you protect as you cut. After I've got the batting removed, I'm actually gonna go in and take out the corners also. So batting's coming out, and right on these corners here, right up in here, I'm just gonna trim that off. So I'm gonna get rid of some of that bulk right there. So how much batting are you leaving on your edge? Just a very little bit, as close as I can get it. Okay, I just don't want it to be a big old, and like it's kind of rough, it's not perfect, which is even better because if it's a perfect line, you're still gonna feel that. By it being rough, it's kind of like, well, where is it? You know, so you try to trim close to that seam. Um, my stitch on this machine is set at a two right now, so it is a little bit tighter, so in case I just nip it, it's not gonna be the end of the world. We are going to top stitch around the outside edge once I get this turned and pressed and that'll also just secure everything in place. Do I have to top stitch? No. I like the look of it better when it's top stitched, and I think if it goes through the washing machine, you're gonna be happier with it if it's top stitched. I barely have any batting on this side. If I get a dab of fabric, Fabric from the outside edge, I don't care. I don't want any from the middle. <laughs> he gets so quiet in here. <laughs> Everybody's concentrating. You're watching and putting it into our memories. There you go. So, in cutting this, it starts off with 10 inch squares. You need seven um, squares of fabric and one square of batting. There aren't any written instructions for this, but there are lots of YouTube videos out there, okay? I think that I do it pretty simply, and I think that by watching me do it, you get to understand it. Um, so I'm gonna go back in and just flip this to the other side and push out my corners. You're not going to wind up with points. You're gonna wind up with very nice edges, but there's too much product in those corners to get square points. So anybody who thinks that they are going mm -hmm. to get that, they're a liar. They're dreaming. They're dreaming. People always, I mean, we make lots of things and they think that it's going to be square, 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 and it's just, there's too much bulk there to get that. But be happy if, if this happens where it rolls right off of the corner seam like that, where it's, I mean, that's beautiful. I, I'm super pleased with that way that corner looks. This one needs a little more pushing because you can see it's not quite at the corner there. So we'll push a little bit harder because I know I stitched right in a nice square point there. If you can see the one I did yesterday, now I notice it, probably nobody else is gonna notice it, but this one's off by a good quarter of an inch. Mm because I didn't reposition as I was doing it. You know, I was trying to do it quick. I all of a sudden put in front of all these people, you know, and um, just happens. When I give it to my sister for Christmas, she'll be thrilled. <laughs> she doesn't know how to sew. She'll ask me what it is, okay? I gave her microwave bowls last year and she had no idea what those were. Okay, so here we go. And they're cute. Okay, so last night I was thinking, okay, what if you put like two pumpkin stems on the outsides here, okay, like just little pieces and then tied them with a ribbon? Wouldn't that be the cutest little piece of candy? Okay, yeah. You'd have to put them in before you turned it, but just make two little pieces, like little tree stumps and put them on the sides and then just, yeah, it'd be adorable as a piece of candy. Okay, so I'm going to press this and I'm really truly going to press I want to put weight onto this to smash it. I'm 
going to take it back to my sewing machine. I'm going to elongate the stitch. So I'm going to make it to a three because I'm just holding this in place. I am again going in heavy on this. So now I'm almost at five eighths of an inch because to try to sew through all of this outside edge here mm -hmm. is it's not impossible, but it's going to keep wanting to push to that anyway. So why not start there and make it look nice? Why try to be within a quarter of an inch and be mad at yourself the whole time because you couldn't get there. Once I get to the fabric that's right next to it, once it's right at it, okay, and now I'm gonna pivot. I look really impressive even though I'm not. Can I just keep doing this all the way into the center? Just keep following straight lines in? Absolutely. Can you see doing it for Halloween and making them into spider's webs? Well, if you do decorative stitches on the folds, mm -hmm. you can do the same decorative stitch on them. Absolutely. And your quick project turns into hours. Exactly. <laughs> what was that? The quick project turns into hours. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like the 10 minute table runner. Yeah. I have yet to do anything in the time frame they say it you can do it. I'm slow. Ask her in classes. I'm the. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, I'm. I am. Okay. Okay. <laughs> How about if I say tied? Tied. Okay. okay I guess I'm not going to fight with either one of you to say oh, that you're I'll not the slow. I'll take the silver medal. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'll take the silver. I don't need the gold. But now, by doing this little bit of top stitching to it, I'm not going to have to worry about it coming apart. Okay. I stopped exactly where I started. Okay, so I have my stop and start points exactly in the same spot. I am going to pull my threads to the back side. I'm going to knot them and bury them. I don't like over sewing. I don't like back tacking, okay? Because it just makes things look gooberish, okay? Yeah. So I tie a knot on the back and then I use um, a self, it's not a self threading. It is um, an easy threading needle. So it's a needle that has a spot where you just snap your threads into, and it really makes things go around very nicely. I will pass this around so you can take a peek at it. I um, thank you for joining us today, and we do have kits available in the store. If you need something, please holler at us. Otherwise, I will see you back here tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Thanks everybody at home, bye. Oh, this is Madonna from Mad Bee Quilton, so just in case you're wondering, bye. <laughs>